Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So I had this idea about possibly making some type of A-bomb legacy video series. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do that was in the event that my wife Abby and I are doing some traveling and maybe that would be an opportunity to share with you one of my older videos that maybe a lot of people haven't seen yet. So that's what I've done. I've kind of gone back in the archive and I've taken a few of those older videos, some that didn't necessarily get a, a, a high view count on it, but has what I think is good content in there that I think people really enjoy seeing, which is I was trying to find some, some of the older videos that had the, the large shaft turning and the heavy chip removal, especially uh, running the big lays. So I've got a few videos that I, that I took of those and I wanna republish them there on the channel and use those in the weeks where I may be absent from uh, taking a video, uh, doing a job and publishing a video. Uh, for instance, whenever you're seeing this, Abby and I are gonna be traveling. Last year we did a trip called the Big Hall and uh, we we're hoping that uh, with any luck, maybe we can make this an annual event, you know, an annual trip every year, um, go out west and see some places that we've always wanted to go and visit. So during this time, that's what, exactly what we're gonna be doing is traveling and so I thought I would take the opportunity while we're doing that when I'm not gonna be in the shop working and uh, filming some of those jobs, take some of these older videos that I think you guys would enjoy. There's probably a lot of content there that I have published in the past that a lot of my newer subscribers, you know, newer subscribers to the channel have not, have not seen yet. I know a lot of folks don't, you know, go on to someone's YouTube channel and, and go way back and, and uh, you know, find older videos that they like to just kind of stay current with uh, whatever's being uploaded there. And I, and I totally get that and understand it. So I do have a few videos that I'm going to share with you. I'm just going to call it the A-Bomb Legacy Series. I think that makes uh, enough sense there to just uh, label it that. And I think it's going to be some uh, good chip making that you guys will enjoy. So... Uh, without further ado, we're going to get right to it. And like I said, you may see a couple more of these in the uh, near future as well. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the shop. And my name is Adam. And this is going to be the final SNS of the year. <laughs> no, it's not the final lesson S. This is just the last one of the year. So here we are on New Year's and we're getting ready to start 2017. And I would like to just extend my thanks to everybody out there that has been supporting me. All of my viewers, everybody that subscribes to my channel, gives me a thumbs up, leaves me comments, you know, joins in the conversation and likes to be a part of what we do around here in this shop and what I do on my channel. Thank you guys, everybody, you know, everybody out there that's supporting me. We've got our patrons out there. Thank you guys. Uh, all of the other YouTube contributors that I've, that I've become friends with and get to collaborate with. If I didn't mention you guys, it's not that, uh, it's not that I don't care at all. It's just I, I, I have so many people that I would like to thank and I can't think of everybody. Uh, ZT Fab, I just remembered your racks over there on the wall. Uh, Paul over there, ZT Fab, thank you for your support. And everybody that has sent in something here for me this year, you know, it's like we just we just passed uh, Christmas, and you know, it's almost like it was Christmas all year long around here. And I'm and I'm not saying that to try to boast or brag or anything like that. Uh, it's it's you guys that are wanting to do this. I don't I don't ask for anything. It's just people that watch the show, they get involved and they like to be a part of this shop and they decide that they like to send something. And I just can't thank you guys enough for the support that you give and the, the tools that you donate for the cause around here, man. It's just awesome. It's been a really great year. We've had a big year of growth on the channel. Never expected to hit 100,000 subscribers whenever I started doing YouTube. And here we are, have surpassed 100,000. I think we're approaching 108,000 subscribers now, somewhere in that somewhere in that range and I really look forward to seeing how far this goes you know how far we continue with this I really have no idea in my mind how long this is gonna last I really don't we're just gonna continue as long as we can 
while we're having fun at it and hopefully continue to bring projects, you know, to, to show on the channel, keep doing the projects and the machine work and, and associating with everybody that's watching the videos here. So, yeah, I just really wanted to thank everybody, you know, just everybody that's been involved with this channel. Thank you very much for the support and I'm continuing to look forward to what we, what we do in the future here on the channel. As far as this video goes, I'm going to show you more of that shaft that we showed in the last episode, that 12 inch gearbox shaft. And this time we're going to get to some heavy turning. And that's one of my favorite things to capture and show on the channel right here. And I think it's a pretty popular thing to watch on the, on the channel as far as my viewers goes too. So I try to, whenever I get to opportunity to make those heavy cuts like that, I take a little bit longer shot sometimes and I try to get a few different angles. And it's something that I that I just really enjoy. I, I try to get a few different angles there and bring it to video, and and it's I think it's fun watching it. So we're gonna have some heavy cutting this time, some more of those some more of those half inch metal removals and fast feed rates and chip making. So get geared up and uh, get you a drink and sit back and relax, and and uh, hope hopefully you'll enjoy. All right, we got the shaft flipped around, so we'll go ahead and get this indicated in. Bad. We got about 50. Ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, what's up, man? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just make it all out of some cast iron. Come on now, just a few left. This is like about two thou. There we go. And about a half thousandth there. We're going to give our first heavy cut a try. This is this is a half inch on the dial or quarter inch per side. So you can see right there at the tool, it's fed in a quarter inch on that side there. And we still got it at 20 thousandths feed rate, but we may play with it and bump it up some. See what she does. Try bumping it up. Now right, this is 25. All right, we're moving some metal there.
So I managed to get the first end of this thing roughed in. It's all these journals are within 50 to 60 thousandths of being to a finished a finish diameter. So it's time to flip it around and get this end roughed in. But as as per usual, I have another rust job that, that just came to me. It's another it, it's a large diameter gear with the with the shaft on it that I've got to do a little bit of repair work on. It's something that uh, just got approved for hot delivery. So this is the um, you know the the only lay that'll swing in. So luckily I got to the point where this is roughed and I can go ahead and take it out. Next time I bring it back down and put it in, it'll be flipped around. So that's just another aspect of the life here in the shop, you know. Sometimes I'm on this stuff and I have to pull off of this and work on another job and then get back on it. But I don't I don't typically get to start on these kind of jobs here and work all the way through it and get it done. There's a there's a lot of other stuff that I have to do. I already did five other gearbox shafts this morning and I've only spent maybe two hours on this total, not even that. So anyway, I'm gonna fly this out of here and get on another job. And next time you see it, it'll be a different day. <laughs> so I just flipped the shaft around and we're gonna go ahead and get her indicated. You always like a little bit of four jaw practice, right? Quite a bit, good eighth of an inch. Let me check my center. All right, my center's tight. already loose. Snug the high a little. <clears throat> Alright, we're getting close now. Bring her back to the top there. That looks like one, maybe one and a half. One thousandth right there. All right, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and check where the steady rest was running, and also we'll, we'll check down here on the, the outer end where I had originally indicated just to see what kind of run out we might be getting. So this was where this was where the steady rest was. Nice. Okay. I'd say that's within one thousandths. All right, let's go down there and check down there. see that? I think so. We've got us a low spot in there. All right, one, two, three, just under about three thousandths, really. Okay, that ain't too bad. So we're getting ready to turn this whole area right here. All right, we're ready to start turning. Thought I'd show you everything set up. We got our, we got a very nice writing, a bull nose center up in there. And I've already got my, my cut established where we're going to stop. Put a little blue mark right there, and set a, set a dial indicator. 
and that and this gives me uh, plenty to face off here and, and the measurement that we use is between the bearing journals which will be here and here that spacer I go off the old shaft and I mic it and once I set my stop there I usually give myself you know a good sixteenth to eighth of an inch there to go in there and clean up once we get some cuts established so we can measure it that's a that's a critical measurement on these and we got the steady rest set so I thought I'd turn it on and let you see these run a little bit and they do a pretty good job of of running nice and parallel against your your shaft and yeah, they they do they still do pretty good there's the upper one there now American did a good job on them steady rest when they built them man they're nice and heavy duty all right so one other thing that I'm gonna do is I have the guard that I put right here too and I, I don't talk about it a lot I, I mentioned it before but we have a little gasket shop here where we can cut gaskets so what I do is I use some of that gasket material. In this case, it's some of this Durlon 8500. And that's for a 12 inch bore uh, cylinder tube, really. So what I do is I make these little guards up and I slide them over and put them up against the, uh, the steady rest there. And I just use a magnet. Sometimes I'll use two magnets right there to kind of hold them. And then when this thing, when the tool is turning, it's, it tries to sling chips and it keeps them from going down in those rollers. So I'm about to do that and I'm gonna start turning. So that was 26 and a half thousand feed rate. I went one notch up on the tumbler. We're going to try 28 and a half thousand feed rate and see what it does. I'm not doing cooling right now because it's easier to see and it's not getting all over the camera. At two more notches up on the tumbler we're now at a 31 thousandths feed rate now i can tell you right now this is probably the fastest i've ever fed a tool so let's see how she does
like she's doing okay. The tool itself likes it. Pretty good load on the machine, I tell you that. Just checking out the cut here, man. I think that's pretty cool. 31,000 feet. It's got that. It's got that nice rigid feel across it, like serrations or uh, laminations. I mean, I think the machine handled it just fine. We're gonna make one more uh, half-inch cut, just like I made here. We've got about 700 thousandths to bring it down to our finished size. So I'll take another half-inch cut, and I'm gonna go ahead and use mine. My Noga cool this time. The uh, the shaft itself is is still cool to the touch. You know, you got something as big as it is. It's going to take a little while to get that heat built up into it. So luckily, most of the heat went off down in the chip pan with the chips, and I can actually feel it. <laughs> I can feel it coming off. And getting it full down there. Let's go ahead and we'll get another rough cut going and this will be our probably our final big heavy cut on this shaft. This is our last rough cut. 
and I switched it out to a CNMG 432 insert. That way I can get a lot better chip formation versus the, the big roughing insert. So that's a 140 on the dial, so it's only a 70,000 feet cut, 25,000 feet rate. And once we make this pass, then it's a matter of getting in here and finish it. This is the tool, that's the tool that we were using. And that one right there is made for some moving some metal. Now if I would have tried to use this on that light cut right there, it would have just been, it would have been curling them and popping them all over the place. Like long, longer stringy curls. Always try to get a nice chip control and pull off a nice tight chip like that there. The way it gives you these and that. 